what's up everybody it's Leeds, and we're back for some more Gwent and today we're going to be playing the new switcheroo seasonal event which is an alternate game mode in which after both players have taken their turn we will switch hands with our opponent obviously that's pretty crazy and the key to success is that all of our cards need to be worth more to us than they are to our opponent today we'll be using an updated version of a deck that i was unbeaten with last time and is the most highly rated deck i've ever made let's go check it out Alright, so today we'll be playing a Syndicate Pirate's Cove deck, and for anyone new to Syndicate, don't worry, because this is the strongest, simplest, and least expensive Syndicate deck you will ever see, making this the perfect deck for both first-time Syndicate players and Syndicate savants. Because as I was saying, since both players will share hands, that means the name of the game is having cards that provide more value to us than they do to our opponent. And the way we do that is we have a bunch of cards here that generate coins and do basically nothing else in some cases we'll get a little bit of boosting or a little bit of damage but the point is we'll have lots of ways of generating coins however we will not provide any ways of spending those coins so that means our opponents can generate all the coins they want they're not gonna be able to use them for anything however in our case we can use our leader ability to spawn in a sea jackal making it the only card that can spend those coins and use them to generate points and since our opponent will take our hand but cannot take our leader ability, that means the Sea Jackal will be the only spender in the entire game, meaning it will be the most important card in the entire game, and only we can play it. So that means the game plan is super simple. Generate a bunch of coins, and then at or near the end of the round, play the Sea Jackal and boost it up. And since we can use that leader ability twice, that's how we'll win two separate rounds. And as long as we're playing whatever the best cards are whenever we get our opponent's hand, the Sea Jackal should be more than enough for us to win the round. Because in some cases, when our opponent plays a card from our starting deck, they will get quite literally zero points. Which technically means that if we can, we'd like to give them cards like Slander, and event tied plunderer that only generate coins or provide bounty and don't have any boosting damage or base power so that we are forcing our opponent to play a zero point card and that's what i mean extremely simple but extremely effective so even if you have never played syndicate before this is the perfect deck to get started especially because they are all bronze cards that cost four provisions so it's also super cheap to make the deck and of course it's hilarious when you beat opponents that are using much bigger stronger and more elaborate cards using just a little army of bronzes as i said i was unbeaten with this deck last time we played switcheroo so after a few changes i'm excited to try this one out as well let's go see it in action all right so going up against Nilfgaard here and they'll go first okay so our objective here is to have as many cards that just generate coins and nothing else as possible so cards like swindle Mutants Maker, also a decent option there. We have two Swindles, in fact, so that's great. We'd like to get rid of the cards that have more value beyond just the coins. So, for example, the Savvy Huckster, we might want to get rid of you. Slander works great. Then maybe get rid of a Witch Hunter. Alright, so they'll start with Verdea. They will get a Stratagem out of that. They'll get Roach out as well, so that is telling. That means they don't have Devotion, which means Mutants Maker will destroy one of their units, so this is a card we'd like to give them. Start out with the Tax Collector, though. Generate some long-term coinage out of him. And seeing some Assimilate, not surprising. Seeing some bombs, so potentially even Matic here. I mean, we've, what, three bombs in our hand? It's certainly possible in that case. All right, they'll go with Smuggle. And I think we want to prioritize getting the Assimilate units out there as quickly as possible, because those are going to become powerful engines. So let's start with the Ducal Guard. And they may choose to take out that Ducal Guard, yeah, with one of those bombs. So we will see. There's Matic. They actually go for our coin generator rather than the Ducal Guard. We do have other ways to generate those coins. So that was actually probably a unit we would have preferred for them to get rid of. And now with Matic out here, as we expected, that means we could put a bounty on Matic, generate three coins from that, and four-point body from Witch Hunter means this is worth seven points, so this is our best card right now. Let's go for that. And of course, we know they want to use Matic's ability here, but that gives them much more of a cost if they want to make that happen.
Alright, they... Oh, are using their stratagem here for a second. I thought they were using their leader ability. It's like, that's pretty aggressive. Jupe stay off. Oh, man. Look at this, though. Probably looking for some resilience here. Do they get it? They do. Except, huge mistake putting it next to Rodea. Not where you wanted to play that. They do use their initial stratagem to boost it up, which almost covers for that. Because, of course, as soon as I saw these next to each other, I thought, perfect target for Red Haze. Which, uh, we probably will still do. Though, actually, we could also purify him to get rid of that resilience. So it's a matter of, do you damage and almost destroy him? Or do you get less damage, but make sure that you absolutely get rid of that resilience? I'd say higher risk, higher reward, because it could potentially help us in both rounds. Whereas this one, less of a short-term benefit, but a guaranteed long-term benefit. So why don't we go for this? We'll play it a little bit safe. Did want to get an assimilate unit out there, but of course, as soon as we saw them... Put on a resilient shoop. Had to respond. Alright, now Bennett Turncoat. Give them some damage. Again, somewhat questionable target. They will only be able to damage units that have spying, and they put that spying on the Witch Hunter, which is not an engine at this point. And uh, maybe they realize that. They should have gone for the Assimilate unit instead. Either way, they decide they cannot handle the Syndicate matchup, so they forfeit. All right, so going up against Skellige here, and we'll go first. All right, so our objective here is to give them as many cards as possible that generate coins and only coins, such as, say, Slander. Let's get rid of the Fiztech Trafficker, just because I don't really want them poisoning any of our units. Though the Ransackers are pretty high-value cards, since they can deal some damage in addition to having a three-point body. So we'd sort of like to get rid of those, or potentially even the Savvy Hucksters, because whoever gets to play both of them would get a lot of value out of them. Maybe we get rid of them in that case, get some bounty instead. Start with the Tax Collector, though. That'll give us some long-term coin generation. We'll go with Crow Mother. Okay, so are we going to see Druids? Alchemy, maybe? What the heck am I looking at? You have Roach in your hand. You have Rodea, which we can't use because we do have duplicates. You have Shoop Stay Off, which we also can't use because we have duplicates. But otherwise, your hand is uh, rather questionable. I mean, technically speaking, Rodea, although we can't use her ability because we do have duplicates, is still the highest value unit right now because she's worth 8 points. And it denies them from getting a lot of points, so I think we go with her, strangely enough. And given how we see Roach here, I have to imagine they also have Knickers. Though in this case, they did not get Knickers in their hand, fortunately for them. They'll use some Bounty. Now, they may have enough damage. You can see a little bit in that hand there. But with their leader ability, certainly they could potentially take out some of our units with Bounties. Of course, it means they're just going to generate coins when they do that, and they're not going to have anything to do with those coins, so not really a problem. So now let's play the cards that, outside of their coin generation, are worth the most, because those are going to be the cards that are most valuable to our opponent, like, say, the Tycloak Ransackers, because if we play you, we can damage Witch Hunter here. Okay, Shoop stay off. They will play it, not so surprisingly. Get Shoop. They do get Resilience. So he immediately becomes the card that we'd prioritize trying to get rid of. And so as bad as this card might normally be, Undying Thirst might actually be the play on Shoop here. Because it is worth 6 points, as is Inspirational Ballad, whereas everything else is worth less than that. But we definitely prioritize getting rid of Shoop, or at least weakening Shoop, over boosting up one of our existing units. So let's go for that. And also, the sooner we get rid of their damage, the more quickly we can potentially use our Sea Jackal. There is Nickers, as we expected. They boosted Shoop Knight, which is understandable. So now we could go Tycloak Ransackers to destroy this Witch Hunter and gain some coins in the process. That's not a bad play, but of course, we would like to find a way to get rid of Shoop Knight. And if we are going to do that, then we're probably going to need to go all out on the damage. Because this is two damage, this is three more for a total of five. Add in the bleed, and that's just enough to get rid of him. So let's go for it. Alright, they'll go with Inspirational Ballad on Shoop, not surprisingly. So in many ways, cancelling out the bleed that we gave him. And at this point, we are now running out of ways to hurt him. Only way from this hand we could do so would be with the Wolf Pack, which is 
probably worth doing, because even if we can't get rid of him, if we damage him, he's going to have less carryover going into round two. Let's do that. All right, they're going to go with the Ransackers, which is one of those cards we were saying we would have liked to have gotten rid of, so they weren't going to be able to play him. But one thing we have succeeded at doing is that at this point, they're going to have to play some cards that they really don't want to have to play. Mutant Maker is not that bad because they do have some easy cards to get rid of, like the Crows. That is still just a two-point play, whereas Slander is worth zero. Witch Hunter is the most valuable for them at four points, so let's play him. And we'll put the bounty on Shoop Knight. And then let's also use our leader ability here. And boost you up at least a little bit. All right, they'll go with the Wyvern Shield. Give them another way of providing a little bit of boost there on Shoop. And now we have Roach, which is three points, which is obviously bad. Wagenberg, which is three points plus some armor, which with no more damage in either person's hand is useless, especially because even if they do use their leader ability, it ignores armor. So this is worth basically just three points as well. That means Fortune Teller is worth four points. This is the best play. So let's go for that. And we'll give Veil to the Sea Jackal. And now they should be, at this point, stuck with some pretty bad cards. Yeah, they played Mutants Maker. And actually, they didn't destroy Crow. I missed what it was there that they got rid of. Must have been the Witch Hunter? I think it was one that we had damaged by two, so functionally, more or less the same thing. On net, they're only gaining two points. So now what we can do is we can play a Mutants Maker. Get some coins. Technically, we overgenerated a little bit there. I suppose we probably should have spent at least one coin here with the Sea Jackal preemptively. But let's do this. Let's use our tactic as well. That means we have a big enough lead here that since they can't gain any points from Slander, I believe even if they do play their leader ability, they are not going to have enough points to catch up to us here. They have the Wagenberg. Yes. They have a little bit more boost remaining with that shield. Well, we will get three points out of Roach. Whereas they are not going to get any points out of his last card here. So that means we play this. We have an 18 point lead. The most they can get from their leader ability would be nine. So that means they would need nine or more points in this last card. We know they're getting zero. So that means they cannot beat us in round one, which means we should not spend any more coins on the Sea Jackal. Because we should already have enough, and all these coins we'll use as carryover to help us out in round two and or three. There is the slander. Doesn't do anything. I mean, we'd love if they just threw away their leader ability for the sake of throwing away their leader ability. They don't. They do have some carryover, of course, on shoot, but we'll see if we can still outscore them in round two. All right, so we have a tax collector. That's particularly good to play first in long rounds. Now, this round, of course, with only three cards apiece going to be considerably shorter so probably still a decent play for us but not as strong as it once was let's get rid of the beggar and smuggle see if we can do any better than that because event i plunder is pure coins which means it is useless for them so we'd love to get another one of those and swindle is functionally the same in that it is also just pure profit nothing else so let's go with the tax collector and then force them to play some bad cards and we'll see we have a little bit of time before we need to decide if it makes sense for us to go with our last round of our leader ability they are going seemingly all out on the carryover. But at least in terms of generating points in this round, the Phoenix is not great. They have Samum. Didn't see any bombs in round one, but there's a non-zero chance that they have Matic? Their deck would be pretty light on bombs in that case, though. That does seem a little bit unlikely. However, they have Count Caldwell, which is very interesting, because he'll go to whichever side of the board has the highest power unit, and right now that would be them with Shoop Knight. However, if we play our Sea Jackal, we might be able to surpass that. So let's play Samum here. To deny them the potential Matic play. And then potentially force them into playing a Count Caldwell that will help us rather than help them. And that would be a 20 point swing in that case. So I'm very interested to see how that plays out. Of course, their leader ability though is a key factor at this point. That's worth a ton of points in a short round. They generate a bunch of coins. As we were saying, does nothing for them here. So their last card is Count Caldwell. That's 10 points that could potentially go to our side if 
we can get something bigger than a 5, but bear in mind, they can also use their leader ability to deal a ton of damage. They will get split between this tax collector and the sea jackal. I say we give it a shot, but it's going to be kind of close. So we do this. If we play Event Tide Plunder right now, we're going to overgenerate coins a little bit, but we're getting a little more value from triggering the Horde 7 on our first round, so I suppose it's still worth doing. So now we just spend like crazy. And the key question here becomes, with their leader ability, which they absolutely will use, will they be able to damage Sea Jackal enough to lower it below the Shoop Knight? They cannot. And we're tied here, so they need to play the card. Otherwise, we're going to win on a tie, which we do. If they had played them, Cow Kalba would have gone to our side, and we would have won by even more. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And they'll go first. Okay, so we just want to give them as many cards as possible that give profit and nothing else. So that way they have a bunch of coins that they can't do anything with and they don't get any value from anything else. So Swindle, for example, is great in that case. And Mutants Maker also is quite nice because, uh, well, they're going to have to destroy one of their units, assuming they don't have Devotion, which they probably don't. We'll see. Let's get rid of the Tidepook Ransackers because those do actually have some damage. And uh, Fistech Trafficker, the Poison could actually be helpful for them as well. All right, they're going to start with Glynis. Ooh, that hurts. One of, if not arguably, the best cards in this event. Let's go with the Tax Collector first, because this is a great way of generating some coins long term. And then uh, once we get their hand, our strategy is simple. Basically, play their best card, and especially since they now have Glynis out there, we'd love to find a way to shut her down. What the heck? Also, notably, Anna Henrietta is a huge problem. Because that means they could take our leader ability and suddenly they can spend coins. So we also want to get rid of that. This is going to be a little tough here. Figuring out how best to go about this. But uh, we'll see how they react to their hand with only cards that generate coins. Alright, they're going to lock the tax collector. In some ways, I mean, obviously it would have been nice to get the coins out of them. But we have so many other sources of coins. Shouldn't be a huge problem. And it does mean that they won't be able to use that to lock a sea jackal anymore. So that's nice. Alright, they're going to go with smuggle. That is one of the cards they could have played that was going to actually generate points. And given the bombs they have here, there's a non-zero chance that they actually have Matic. So if we're getting greedy, let's start with the Imperial Diviner. Could even use that. Purify the Tax Collector. Get our coins back. But we really want to make sure they don't get the chance to play Anna Henrietta. So that may be the card we play on our next turn, at least the next time we have that hand. All right, Tibor was another card I was eyeing, and uh, that is a pretty good exchange they got there. 13 points on their side. We got a three-point unit out here, and obviously didn't get the profit to trigger here. So what we'd love to do would be to, at the end of the round, leave them with cards like Slander and Swindle that only generate coins. That way, they can't generate any more points beyond potentially their Assimilate. Let's try to deal some damage, and I mean, if we could find a way to actually get rid of Glynis, that would obviously be ideal. Though I'm not sure we're going to have enough damage to make that happen. Alright, they're going with Swindle. That was one of those cards we were saying has basically no value for them unless they manage to use Anna Henrietta to steal our leader ability. So we do really want to make sure they don't get her. But at the same time, she's not a very high point card for us because we just play her in our melee row to avoid getting that leader ability and she'd only be worth three points. So I think what we'd prefer to do would be going with the Frenzied Dow, moving Glynis into this row, and then potentially next time we have this hand using Red Haze to take Glynis out. I mean, chances are pretty low they'd let us do that. They'd probably put something in between those cards, but I think it's worth a shot. So let's go for it. And we deliberately got the Assimilate unit out here first, so that uh, we are going to generate points from that every time we play a card from their hand. Obviously, nowhere near as good as the double Assimilate from Glynis, but we'll see if they punish us for not using Anna Henrietta yet. All right, it's Samu. That's a good sign. And it is Matic. As expected. But they actually messed up big time. Because on our next turn, we can use Red Haze to take out Glynis. In which case, yeah, why don't we put a bounty on Matic? So now they really need to play a unit in between Glynis and Tibor. Yeah, we did get the coins from Matic, so yeah, that worked. So if they play unit in between those cards, which they did not, 
then we would have probably used Anna Henrietta, but instead, let's use Red Haze now. And next turn, we are definitely going to use Anna Henrietta. So we just really don't want them to play her now. Alright, it's not Anna Henrietta, so that's huge. They will get Matic back. But I'm not nearly as concerned about that. Especially because at this stage, the cards we're going to end up giving back to them are the cards we were saying we wanted to leave them with at the end. Cards that were going to force them to destroy one of their units, or purely give them coins that they can't use. One exception being Shakedown, this can give us a boost, so we probably want to go this route. However, I don't think they have any ways of getting rid of our Sea Jackal. So let's play him. Boost him a bit. And then, play Shakedown. Alright, there goes Matic. So they have a bunch of cards now that they don't want to use. They do have their leader ability, which they could use to swap out the cards in their hand. No, they're going to put a bounty on one of our cards. And that really doesn't matter. So now, we've waited long enough to play Anna Henrietta. As I was saying, the reason why it was so important that we made sure that we were the ones to play this was because if they replace their leader ability with our leader ability, suddenly they can create a Sea Jackal, they can benefit from those coins, and the entire premise of this deck no longer works. So we need to play her, and we need to make sure we play her in the melee row so that we don't accidentally take their leader ability. So we do this. And we can do one more round of boosting with the Sea Jackal. We could do that now. There's some potential that through Land of a Thousand Fables, they might get some way to reset him, so that's a little bit dangerous. Why don't we wait just in case? Because we aren't going to generate any coins on this turn, so it's not like we're going to reach our coin cap. And ideally, we would play Land of a Thousand Fables when we get that hand back, but my guess is they're going to play it here. There it is. Okay, so what do they get with it is the big question. Could potentially be something nasty. Onearmancy, potentially into a Yurden. That was the primary reason why I was waiting to go all out on our boosts. Oh, okay. Musicians of Blaviken. That's, uh, yeah, that's an option. What do they get with it? Shield? Okay, shouldn't be a problem. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to play Slander, get some profit out of this, and we're going to force them to play Mutants Maker with their last card, and assuming they don't have Devotion, which... We know they don't have Devotion since they have Land of a Thousand Fables. That means they will need to destroy one of their units. So actually, with the four-point body, getting rid of a three-point body, that means they still on net are gaining one point, whereas with Slander, they're gaining zero. So tell you what, I think it's actually preferable for us to go Mutants Maker here. So sure, before we do it, activate one more round of that, then do this, and then we just go on a spending spree. They'll just pass, which is uh, not usually something that you are supposed to do in this event because, well, we're going to get this hand back. So we could, if we wanted to, proceed to play this card. They do have Matic, so the more bombs there are, the more potential they have to score more points than us. So I think we want to remove as many bombs from the equation as we possibly can. So let's do this. Or then we will technically need to pass because we are out of cards, even though we'll get this hand back. Alright, so once again, we're ideally looking for cards that just generate coins and nothing else. That means Slander is perfect. High Cloak Ransackers is one of our cards that does deal a fair bit of damage as well, so we'd like to get rid of this. We'd still like to get rid of this. Alright, and we don't have anything to put a bounty on, don't have anything to damage, and we kind of like to leave them with Slander. So let's go with the Beggar. Alright, they're gonna go with Artorius Vigo, which is another Assimilate unit. So that is dangerous, and they'll create another assimilate unit. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Kingslayer really doesn't matter against us, because we're not going to play anything else from our deck. Oneiromancy is almost certainly the card we're going to play in that case. Mostly just to deny them. Is there anything in particular we'd like to get out from our deck? I mean, we could use Dip in the Pontar to get rid of one of those units, so I think we do that. Let's go Nero here. Into Dip in the Pontar. And then we could get rid of the Slave Hunter because although it has less power, it does have that damage to order ability. So I suppose we go for that. And yeah, I think we just saw them use their Land of a Thousand Fables order ability, which was one reason to not give them that special card we were talking about that gave them pure profit. Because now they can transform that and we don't know what they got from it. 
They don't play it, though. You have the Savvy Huckster instead. It does give them a little bit of damage. Oh, actually, that might have been what they got. No, actually, no, they turned it into a second beggar. We did not have a second beggar in our hand. We, of course, do already have one, which means we will trigger this bonded ability, and they are not going to have any way to shut down a Sea Jackal if we play it now. So I say we play a Sea Jackal. Boost it a little bit. Then play Beggar. And get back up to our maximum number of coins. Now they do still have their leader ability, which they could potentially use. To get some new cards in their hand, and who knows what they might get with those. So let's deliberately wait a little bit before we spend the rest of our coins. Oh, though actually that was a mistake. Because we're going to get their hand at the end of their turn. They're not going to have any cards left. So that means this is actually going to be the last card in this round. So yes, we should have absolutely spent all of our coins there. They have Kingslayer, as we know. They will use their leader ability as well. More of Boris. Now, of course, any cards they draw, they're going to have to put back in their deck. So it's purely just for the seven-point body at this point. And uh, they did actually have enough points before playing that. So that was a misplay on their part as well. I'd argue our misplay was humongous, actually. Whereas theirs, not as big of a deal. Because here we see, we're going to get no cards. So the round will end. Meaning we don't have time to use those coins to boost the Sea Jackal. And most importantly, we used our last Sea Jackal. So we cannot use this anymore. That's the big problem. So let's get rid of the Fizzsec Trafficker. And that means suddenly the coins don't matter for us either. So let's get rid of the Ventide Plunder as well. Alright, they're going to go with an Insimilate Unit. That's dangerous. The Tax Collector is just worth 4 points because as we said, we don't have any use for the coins anymore. That means the Tide Cloak Ransackers are worth 5 points, making them slightly better. Alright, they'll use the other Ransackers, which makes sense. Alright, so Red Haze doesn't work because they don't have any units next to each other. We could play the Turning Shalimar for 7 points in the melee row. I think that is probably ideal because it also means we're getting rid of an Assimilate unit. It's either that or it's a 5-point Alba Armored Cavalry that also locks this unit, but this is definitely preferable. So they're going to have 5 points in their next turn, whereas we're going to have 4. Which should mean, barring some strange factor that I'm not considering, we should win 9 to 8. There's the Alba Armored Cavalry. They just don't even bother to play it in their melee row. Alright, here's the Tax Collector. And there we have it. We have one, but oh boy, we did have a very big misplay that we very nearly paid for. But even with that, we still beat one of the best decks in this event. Because our deck is that good. So there's look at an extremely simple, extremely cheap, but extremely effective Syndicate deck for the new Switcheroo Seasonal Event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.